Hi guys, Jen Sewell here from A Grateful Studio and thank you so much for joining me. I'm super excited because today I'm going to be introducing you to my new designer series, Cutters and Silk Screens. These have been brought to life by the wonderful Rhonda over at RJ Crafts. She has brought my designs to life. I am super excited and I cannot thank her enough. I just love how these turned out. Now what I'm gonna be focusing today on is what you all voted for, and that was my Bumblebee cutter and silk screen design. Now this is the uh, necklace and earring set that I showed recently, and uh, overwhelmingly the poll chose bees for you guys to take a look at. We do need our pollinators, and I super love bees, so today is going to be inspired by spring bumblebees and uh, I hope you like this tutorial and uh, I really love to play with colors and I'm going to be uh, focusing on creating a bee and an aster flower. Uh, I just like, uh, I love bumblebees, I love bees, any type of bee really. And uh, I hope this inspires you to create some very cute beautiful jewelry of your very own. So again, thank you for stopping by and enjoy the tutorial, everybody. So I wanted to do a quick uh, video on the sizes and the different cutters that you can use with the new uh, bee stencil, as well as my next upcoming tutorial on pandas. Um, Rhonda over at RJ Crafts is a genius because she makes so many different sizes of uh, designs that it really makes it easy to just go out of the box and do different things and fit different things in different places and it just gives us all such a um, an easy way to uh, come up with uh, something really creative and unique so I wanted to show you guys some of the sizes uh, compared to the stencils, the screen, silk screens, I mean. I always call them stencils. Um, but um, in the video, I make this, uh, this necklace or this uh, uh, pendant, uh, which is the smaller size of the V-shaped cutter. Uh, but what I wanted to show you was how the V uh, can fit in all these different cutters in uh, some way, shape, or form. Um, as you saw here, I didn't use the uh, cutter to actually cut the bee out. I just placed it over the flowers here and uh, it, it gave a, a really cool look. And then on this one, I cut the bees out and placed them over the top. So there's different ways you can do that. I'm sure you've thought of these already, but I just wanted to show you that um, the bees can fit in the Mai Tai cutter. Uh, they can fit, of course, in the teardrop cutter. You can put bees on the collar cutter, and you can find these all at RJ Crafts. So you can put bees on the collar. Uh, I can't remember what number this one is, but of course you can put bees here. You probably put a few of them, maybe a large one in the middle, like the larger bee cutter, and then put the other ones face, the smaller one facing, facing the main bee. So there's, there's different ways that you can come up with this. But I wanted to give you an idea of how you can use your bee cutter or your bee stencil on all these different cutters. I hope you uh, come up with some beautiful bee jewelry of your own. And please uh, like and share this video uh, if you'd like to see uh, more uh, tutorials in the future. Uh, you will be alerted to when my next video pops up. So thank you so much for joining me. We're about to start. Uh, some of the tools that you're going to need is of course a uh, stencil uh, and, or not stencil, but silk screen number 267 and a bumblebee cutter set. Um, you can find this in the link below, of course. Uh, head on over to rjcrafts.com and you can see that right here. Uh, and uh, get this set. Uh, I'm also going to, let's see, I'm going to be using the smallest B uh, and uh, I think I'm going to use uh, the second uh, largest or second smallest uh, B cutter as well. So these right here are soft, soft B 
necklace cutters and I'm going to use the um, the smallest set of the B-shaped necklace pendant cutters, a ball tool, razor blade, an oval shaped cutter. Now this is it's really small. I don't I don't think it's more than an inch, but uh, this is this is the cutter I'm going to use. And the color that I'm going to use for my bees is this beautiful orange. These are both Primo colors, and this is Fuchsia. And I'm going to mix the both of these together to get a really cute and pretty color going for our bumblebee. I brought you over here so that you could see what I'm doing. I really want these two colors to be closer together so that my uh, I can get all of the B, both colors on, on the B. So I'm going to kind of squish this a little bit together to make it more narrow so I can bring those together. Here I have my Primo Bright Green Pearl set at a, uh, a number three on my Atlas 180. And here I have purple. This is Primo Purple mixed with just a touch of white. And I'm using my oval cutter and then cutting off the sides of the oval to create the leaves for the flower that I'm going to put on my pendant. And the gray clay that you see to the bottom left. That is just uh, some uh, various mixed clay together that I created gray with. It's just kind of leftover clay and that's going to be the back of my piece. This is Acid Yellow uh, by Sculpey. It's no longer available. Um, I just like the color. I'm using the very tip of my teardrop cutter here to create some little triangles that I'm going to use for the middle, uh, the stamen of my flower. And I'm using my ball tool to just kind of curve my leaves around and just create the look of my leaves. I want them to be kind of pointed upwards uh, because that's the type of flower that I'm creating. Just going to take those little triangle pieces and create some, some stamens sticking up ball tool to help point those upward without smashing them with my finger.
here I'm just using my needle tool to create some texture on the leaves. I love this easy no stick slip that Rondo over at RJ Crafts has created. It makes it just nothing sticks to my stencil or my cutter anymore. And these bees are set to a thickness of three on my pasta machine. And these are going to be my earrings as well as the bees that I use on my aster flower pendant. So here I'm cutting out the back of my aster and bee pendant. And this is set to a thickness of two on my pasta machine. And I'm going to use a bit of uh, thick wire here. It's quite bendy. Uh, to just be the uh, place saver for uh, where my jewelry wire will be uh, fitting through later after everything is cooked. And I'm not really worried about my fingerprints because I'm going to put a bit of texture on here in a minute. And I want to put some texture and I love the swirls. Although I didn't put the swirls on well enough on the right side as I did on the left side, but that's okay because I'm going to cover them in bees. And we need a bit of sparkle, so I'm going to adjust this up a little bit. And then I'm going to pull out some of my favorite new mica powder. I'm using the green and blue pearl colors. You can find these over at RJ Crafts. I bought the whole set. They're all awesome. And you get a lot of it for your money, so it's a good price too. adjust these bees a little bit. I'm tipping, making a little tip to their their butts. <laughs> and then I'm going to take some gold mica powder and I'm going to finish off the stamen and I also am going to add a little bit of gold to their butts because I want it to look like they have picked up a little bit of the uh, pollen that is on the flower. So here I'm going to bake these and uh, for one hour at 270. I'm using Primo and I'm going to be taking uh, just a block piece of each of these colors, which is Primo blue and I think it's baby blue or sky blue. And uh, a small block of white. It's kind of uh, two-thirds the size of the other blocks. And I'm going to work that down and bring that together so that I can use my uh, V-shaped pendant cutter. working this to about the size of my smallest v-shaped cutter and this is a setting of three on my pasta machine I'm going to take my roses and you guys have to take a look at Gail Thompson's uh, rose cane tutorial to make your own rose canes this is just regular um, pink and white roses I love them and I'm using my finger to kind of flatten them down first. I'm not worried about fingerprints right now because I'm going to take a sheet of copying paper and I'm going to burnish these roses on here so there won't be one single fingerprint left behind once I'm done burnishing. And this is a leaf that I made I can't quite remember where I learned how to do it, 
but if you look up leaf canes, you too can come up with some canes that you can use for leaves. I have various different kinds, but this is the one that I like the most. Here's where I'm going to take a regular sheet of copying paper, I'm placing it over the top and I'm burnishing. Now this is going to take some time, you want to burnish it down until you don't feel any bumps at all, any bumps. So this is taking a lot longer than in this video because I'm speeding this up so you guys, you can see what's going on, but at the same time you don't have to sit here and watch extra video. I'm just going to take my V-shape cutter and figure out exactly where I want it to land. like how that turned out. Now you could put that bee on there, but I'm going to do something a little bit different and I'm just going to put my bee directly on to my design. Figure out where I want to place this. Yeah, I like that right there. And you're gonna see, it turns out actually pretty interesting being able to see the blue and the rose underneath the bee. Now, this is something, if you guys don't like using the uh, card method, you can put a mop brush into a little tiny bit of paint. You do not want your mop brush to be soaking paint with paint. You just want it to have just enough on there and you can stipple that over the top of your stencil and check this out. It actually worked out really well. Here I'm going to show you how I do my roses on my spiral earrings. Basically the same way I did the necklace part. I just add the roses on there and I burnish it. Take my blade to kind of tuck everything back into the size that, and shape that I want. And then I'm gonna cut these into strips and wrap them around a metal straw. I have lots of metal straws. Some of these strips are gonna be a little bit thicker than I'd like, so I might have to trim some of these down. just wrapping, wrapping the strip around my straw one after the other so that they're all on the straw together. I can fit quite a few of these spirals around on one straw, but I believe the most I can fit at one time are six, six pieces. Now this is dragonfly glaze. I'm using, I believe, the uh, blue, purple, violet. I absolutely love this stuff. I can't put it on enough of my jewelry. And I'm going to use this to kind of just add some some big time sparkle to my little bee. And I apologize for my video being out of focus here. I did not realize that the focus hadn't readjusted after I showed you the, the bottle of the paint. Now I just need to let that dry and I'm going to bake that. 
So here's some pieces that are finished baking that I'm going to add a sealant to. Four coats, and I wanted to show you how I add the backing on to uh, some of my pendants and earrings after they're done baking. And uh, this gray clay is rolled out to a thickness of three on my pasta machine. Um, and I'm using a uh, head pins that have the uh, eyelets at the bottom so that I can add some gems to them later. And I'm using a little bit of liquid Sculpey clay to help the, adhes help the adhesion. Tripping over my tongue a little bit here. And I just want to tuck those little eyelets at the bottom, or the loop, uh, into the clay so that it doesn't twist around and move around after I put them onto uh, the French hook earrings. Put those off to the side so that I can get those ready to bake, and I'm just going to smooth around the edges of my teardrop here. And I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, really bendy wire to go in the pendant as a place setting or place saver for my jewelry wire. And again, a little bit of Sculpey clay to help the adhesion and set this off to the side to bake for a second time. And I'm gonna use this sponge to add some texture to the back of my piece and here I'm going to show you basically the same thing only I'm going to add this to the back of my roses and bees and I'm using a little bit thinner wire on the back this wire I got this wire it's kind of bulk wire uh, that I found in the floral department And the good thing about adding the back after the front has baked is you don't have to worry about fingerprints or distortion. Now if you were to use a mica powder on the front you might be a little bit afraid of distortion but I uh, used paint for my little bumblebee so I'm not worried about that coming off while I'm messing around with the back. And texture sponge again and then I will put these off to the side and bake again at 270 for 40 minutes I'm going to wrap my spirals my spiral straw in a uh, piece of copying paper to help save any uh, discoloration from the heat so hopefully uh, it saves its uh, beautiful vibrant color that's also why I'm using a cake pan over the top of my pieces to help save the color. And as you can see, uh, the bees turned out a little bit darker, but that wasn't because of uh, not covering it with a cake pan. Uh, my new oven is cooking at a higher temperature, and I uh, couldn't quite see them darkening because they were covered. So I learned from that mistake from my new oven, and I will adjust the heat accordingly. I'm putting four coats just on the front of my pieces here. Sorry for the shakiness. I uh, just was holding my uh, camera while I was doing that. And uh, here, let's get started with uh, adding the jewelry wire and uh, creating my bee earrings. So I'm gonna add holes to uh, each side on each wing of my bees, just two of these. I'm going to do uh, two versions of earrings here so you can kind of see kind of the options you have with creating earrings using this bee cutter and stencil set. So 
So as you can see, I've pulled the wire out and I'm going to put my jewelry wire in. Now sometimes this can be a little tricky because the wire might not go in smoothly at first, but do not worry, it will just keep trying. Now let's get beading. So I'm using white, yellow, green, and purple seed beads. As you can see, there are black there. I decided not to use black. Just didn't quite suit the colors I was looking for to go with this particular pendant. And I'm also using some uh, beautiful green heart optic glass beads as well as some uh, purple check crystals. So I'm going to speed through these and uh, bead up my pendant here. So now that I have everything beaded up, I'm going to use my uh, jump ring to put on the ends so that I can add my flower toggle clasp pieces to both sides of my pendant to finish this necklace off. And then I will start working on uh, adding uh, very similar beads to my earrings to match this pendant. So now that I have that set done, as well as this set right here, these turned out really cute. Now let's work on the blue sky and pink rose with a little bee on there. And I'm going to take my hand drill and drill holes while the spirals are still on the straw. This just makes it easier so that uh, I don't accidentally uh, push too hard and end up breaking my spiral. Although if your spirals are cooked to the correct temperature, they should be quite bendy. But uh, despite bendiness, sometimes I've still broken uh, spiral earrings while putting the holes in them. So I find this is just a little bit easier to do while they're still on the straw. And I'm adding a hole to the top of the spiral as well as the bottom of the spiral near the point of the spiral. Now that I have that done, I'm going to take my six millimeter jump ring and I'm going to add that to both the top and the bottom of my spirals. But first I'm going to add them to the fish hooks. Close that up. Looks really cute. Now I'm going to do the same on the other earring. And now time to add a gem to the bottom of each spiral as well. And these are just round Swarovski crystals. I purchased these when they are on sale over at Hobby Lobby, but I'm sure I can purchase them online for cheaper. I'm just not a great uh, judge of character when buying certain crystals online and figuring out what their sizes really are before I purchase them. So I end up with a lot of stuff sometimes that I'd rather not use because it's uh, either too large or too small for my purposes. Now that those are done, I have three sets of B earring and pendants. I hope this gives you some inspiration on the various 
ways that you can use really any of Rhonda's silk screen and cutter sets. Thank you.